Are you guys gonna go? Three, two, one! <laughs> guys, we coated this entire tent in Flex Seal. In fact, we coated a lot of stuff in Flex Seal. Unfortunately, we couldn't find any more boats that Phil Swift hadn't cut in half, but we want to put Flex Seal to our own tests out in the wild. Camping in the wild exposed to the elements can be brutal. <laughs> So we wanted to test if a completely waterproof tent will be comfortable and protect us, or will it leave us sweaty and miserable? See, recently we tried coating some clothing in Flex Seal, and it turned out surprisingly well. We found that the rubber barrier Flex Seal creates is highly effective at repelling water, even on clothing. So this left us curious. Can we take this one step further and try a Flex Seal tent in the wild? We aren't in the wilderness quite yet. We have to get all our equipment set up so we can flex seal it. Let's take a look at all the stuff we're gonna be coating in flex seal. Grace is setting up a camp chair if she can ever get it out of the bag. We've got a sleeping bag that should do a pretty good job even without flex seal keeping us warm. And then we have a tent. Actually, we've got two tents. Oh, hey, Callie. Are we filming now? Yeah. Oh, crap. So there's a couple reasons we've got two tents. One is so we can have a good side-by-side -side test of a tent coated in flex seal and one that's not. The other is it lets us paint better. We'll be painting the body of this tent while we paint the rain fly on this tent. Then once they're both dry, we'll put that fly on this tent and have one that's completely coated. Sounds pretty fly if you ask me. Let's get started. I'm realizing is I'm gonna be in the totally flex sealed tent and I'm not gonna know when it's morning. I'm gonna be in the not flex sealed tent and I wake up as soon as it gets light out so I'm gonna be awake at like six and I'm just gonna start making noise and that's how she's gonna know it's morning. Just like sounds of a bear outside my tent. <laughs> As we're coating this tent in rubber, it makes us wonder, why don't they come this way? Why aren't all tents 100% waterproof? All right, one of the most important factors in human comfort is the humidity level. There's actually science in your camp. Tents are designed in a special way to create balance. They're made of special materials that keep the hard rain and elements off of you, but at the same time to allow air to circulate and the interior moisture to leave. The mesh at the top of the tent greatly increases airflow, helping to prevent the moisture level from building up inside the tent. High humidity makes heat and cold both feel more extreme. However, Flex Seal changes things. The spray is a rubber substance mixed with solvents and cures in a closed cell, non-porous solid layer. This in turn changes the properties of whatever you spray it on, rendering the materials impervious to liquids. It's also entirely non-breathable, so no air or moisture is going to get through it. So while it may be beneficial to keep all the rain off, the lack of ventilation may lead to extreme levels of humidity and temperature. Since we're going camping, we need to test out the endurance of Flex Seal. This is a great opportunity for us to test out the things that you all wanted to see. We're gonna see how well Flex Seal holds up to these extreme temperatures. We present to you the newest line of products, Flex Seal Camping. Nate and Kelly, show us what we've got. First off is the baddest, meanest sleeping bag on the market. Have you ever thought that your sleeping bag is too breathable? Fret no more, this rubber covered sleeping bag might just be a nightmare. Second, we've got the most luxurious waterproof camping chair. Is it comfortable? Maybe. Does it hold up nicely? Not anymore. But will it make your butt sweat? Most likely. And now, the pièce de résistance. Topping off our gear list is the state-of-the-art camping piece, the Flex Seal Tent. From top to bottom, this rubber-coated housing is set to keep the extreme elements off your face and seals everything inside. Everything. Looking for a great night's rest in the wilderness? Then you need to look somewhere else. This might be a huge mistake, but we'll see. So we've got our tents and camping equipment painted up and drying up there. While that's going on, we are gonna try some other experiments with this Flex Seal stuff, stuff we haven't gotten a chance to try out yet. Now, is it gonna get as cold at night as liquid nitrogen? I'm gonna go ahead and say no. Yes. Thankfully, no. Yes. Grace is wrong. Uh, but we're gonna test it in liquid nitrogen anyway, because we like testing stuff in liquid nitrogen. We love liquid nitrogen. Ooh, it's dancing. Go, go, go. Ooh, that's fun. 
Are we gonna have a string? I think we have like just a frozen wreath of it now. Interesting. So like when it hits, it's hot enough that it's causing the liquid nitrogen to boil and move around and it changes the shape, but quickly it cools down to a point where it's, it no longer moves at all. It just solidifies in place. Now it's mostly calm. Yeah, you wanna try grabbing Grab some of it? it? Yeah, I bet it will melt and start getting your glove gooey pretty quick. But yeah, at the moment right. it's probably very, like you could crunch it. Oh, very quickly. Where's the blowtorch? Oh, hello Callie. This one? Found how to summon her, good. <laughs> so we're going to test a very small amount of this and see if it burns like other rubber objects. Ready? We looked up the material <gasps> data safety Ooh, sheet. Weird! Cool! It looks like lava! That looks very odd. Wow! That is the coolest! It looks like lava. It looks like lava! It really does though! So it burns, but it's not like a super crazy violent burning. No! You wanna yes. poke it? Yeah. Ooh! I wanna know like what's... So it does kind of burn a little bit like a melty rubber. Oh, it smells well. Yep, it smells like burning rubber. Okay, there's one more experiment we want to try. We've all seen the Flex Sealed Bucket video where Phil Swift sealed a bucket that took a lot of damage. We want to see if we can completely seal a cup full of water using Flex Seal. Will it be strong enough to hold all the water in? At this point, we have everything painted up, ready to go. It's time to take our tent into the wild. We've had camp set up for a little while now, and it's It's time. getting cold. Yep, it's time for some experiments to begin. Much colder. The sun is getting low. We've got clouds and plenty of wind blowing on us, which has definitely dropped the temperature a noticeable amount. <laughs> it's actually even supposed to possibly snow tonight where we are, so yeah. that's so gonna be quite a work. test. <laughs> yeah, quite a test of our equipment. But right now we want to do some tests to see how the two different tent materials do for temperature, humidity, and carbon dioxide level with a bunch of people in them. So we're just gonna have everyone here climb into one tent at a time. Uh, we'll just keep track of how the stats are doing and after 15 or 20 minutes, we'll call a time and then we'll switch to the other tent and see if it's different over there. Callie is looking at our monitor that checks the carbon dioxide content in the air. This is parts per million. So it, was, it started out, before anyone got in here, it had just been sitting in the tent for like 20 minutes, and it was down to like 290. Now in theory, an unsafe level of carbon dioxide in terms of parts per million starts at around 10,000. It changed to the grumpy face. Okay, that means it's getting near 1,000. Uh, both of these devices are supposed to be measuring moisture. They have conflicting results. What's that one say on the moisture content? 25% relative humidity. All right, and this one says 34. I can't tell you which one is correct, but I think mostly what we're interested in is if they go up. The crowd goes wild. <sighs> okay, so looking at our thermometer tears. Yes. Um, this one is now inaccurate because Callie breathed on it. It's true, I breathed on it a lot. With the CO2 monitor, um, we actually, with the gusts of wind coming through, saw it fluctuate quite a bit. 
So we saw a peak of like, what? I think it was like 15? Mm -hmm. About that. Yeah. About 1,500, and then... Uh, the wind blew it down to like 800. 700, 800, yeah. something like that. Part two of going in what the pit. <laughs> Why does this one feel tighter? Okay, here we go. Okay, so we are now in the spooky flex sealed tent, which is spooky because it blocks almost all of the light. It's, it's it's really just as light outside as it was in the other tent, but it doesn't get through the walls at all. So it's much darker in here. In fact, if we turn off all of our lights, if you, you can just see holes in the wall, like where it's not quite thick enough. So we are we are well past the maximum that we got to, and we've only been in here for like four minutes. I'm normally not somebody that gets claustrophobic. We should but, tell those um, stories. No. We are just shy of, oh, we just passed 3,000 by 100. Oh it just jumped up another 200. How's our moisture level doing? 37 on this one for moisture. Temperature is like climbing very, very quickly. It's at like 65.8. So we are warmer, higher on CO2, and higher on moisture. Um, so we did not realize the CO2 monitor maxed out at 5,000 parts per million. We hit that in eight minutes. We didn't even come close in the other tent. Um, we got, yeah, temperature, we got up to 78, 77, 70, it was at 78 briefly. Right. So Callie sleeping in this tent will definitely be leaving parts of the door and yeah. the side little pocket wall open so that there is some ventilation so as to not bring the CO2 up to dangerous levels. Okay. Door open, door open, door open! Oh, freedom! Everyone breathe. So the reason this is all working the way it is, is because of insulation. It's similar to how an igloo is going to work. So on the outside of an igloo, the ambient temperatures can be anywhere as low as negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. However, inside, it can warm up to 16 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Guys, it has been a really long day, but we got everything set up and I'm ready for bed. Hopefully Nate sleeps okay in the sleeping bag in the pillow and hopefully I survive the night in the tent. Good night, Nate. Good night, Mark. Good night. Good night, Phil. Time to go to sleep, Callie. Nighty night night. Oh, middle of the night update. This tent, because it's not breathable, the wind is just battering the outside of it and it is insanely loud. <laughs> it is so bright. <laughs> oh, okay. Nice and dark. Well, that was an experience. First, let's talk about what the night was. We said that there might be some snow. There was no snow, no rain, but there nothing was like wind. that. It was horribly windy until probably around two or three o'clock. About that. It's loud in this tent. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine your, t I mean, I could hear your tent. I imagine your tent was- It just wobbles. Horrendously loud uh -huh. in there. In terms of warmth, I, I thought it was decent. I, it was a 30 degree sleeping bag in theory okay. before we started, before I painted it. And I think it did about the same as a normal 30 degree sleeping bag. I didn't have any problems with overheating. I didn't have any problems with too much moisture in it. Okay. Maybe if we had been doing this in July, we would. All right, so the Flex Seal tent itself, guys, like Nate said, it was so loud to sleep in. It was, the wind was picking up the corners of the tent because we don't have them all staked down. And so the noise was absolutely insane. But what I thought was interesting is that the CO2 monitor did go off and it actually didn't take very long. It was a few hours. I think it first went off at about midnight. And then again, later I reset it. Also the moisture level in there. I think it would have been a lot worse in the uh, in the summer, like Nate was saying. I think if you were in the summer, you'd basically have a sauna. Uh, but it did get up to 42% moisture, which is a lot higher than what we have in the air around here. Uh, so that was interesting. What I also liked was the fact that it got to about 40 degrees in the tent. And it was not 40 degrees last night. It was much colder. It was, um, we dropped to what, 30 degree Fahrenheit? Probably, probably lower. I think okay. it was probably more like 25 at its coldest. Like I said, we didn't get any rain or snow. So to really appreciate the effect it has in terms of waterproofness, we're gonna have to add our own. 
All right guys, so Nate and Kylie are still up camping. I called it quits because it was a little too cold and windy up there for me, but I came back to check on our Flex Seal cup. We sprayed about four layers on top of this cup uh, to seal in the water. And now is the tale of truth. Will it hold all the water in this cup? Okay, ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> It did it. So not only can Flex Seal seal your bucket so that water doesn't leak out, but it also holds liquid in. I mean, I, don't, I wasn't really expecting this because uh, when I came to test this the first time, the Flex Seal had pulled away from the liquid on top, and so there was a hole. So we sprayed out four layers on here. I'm amazed. I mean, you can see when I poke it, you can like see the Flex Seal give a little bit, but it doesn't ever uh, give out. So it didn't rain last night, but we still want to put our tent to the water test. So we're going to go ahead and simulate a torrential downpour. And Nate has volunteered to be the guinea pig. What? That is so impressive. It was not easy. I'm going to turn around. So you count down and I'll twist. Three, two, one. Are you still dry? Um, well, I was until I stood here in this puddle <laughs> and turns out when I flex sealed this, you can see there were creases and water is soaking in through those creases. Okay, but the back so, of you that we just hit with water is oh, dry. Yeah, totally good. My socks are very wet and cold now though. All right, let's give it some heavy rain. Full blast at the door. What if it was such bad rain that it was like raining upwards under the rain fly? It's really bad rain. Are you guys gonna go? Water get inside? Yes. <laughs> all of it through the zipper wouldn't go all the way down, so all of it went right there and is in a puddle right here. <laughs> it also almost collapsed the tent. Yeah, huh? Any moisture at all coming through? None. Like there's there's what looks like drips, but that's just the flex seal that came through. Uh huh. But completely dry. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I mean, there's. A few drips from where it like fell off the door as I opened it, but given the amount of water that we just threw at this thing, there's like nothing. Phil, Phil Swift. Swift! Hey, T-Core team, Phil Swift here. Listen, that Flex Seal camping equipment was off the charts. Fantastic, or flex-tastic. Listen, I got a few other ideas I really think we should discuss. Let's get started. Dang it. <laughs> that was it. That was it. Yeah, got, got it. One. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, that was the first, first try. First try. Yeah! First, day, first try. Butterfly. <laughs> Do it! Be the butterfly you were always meant to be! Spread your wings! Oh, I don't have wings. I did not hit her! I did not! 